Okay, storm workers, it's not lucky. I just thought I'd put out this video to show people how to use the uh, Bell V280 Valor, uh, NARPA edition that I've just released. So, um, first things first, there's a small um, breaker down here. This is a kill switch that enables you to slow the amount of electricity that's lost by just having things that need to be had, like the, uh, the hinges down and the uh, rotors, the tail fins at those angles. So it will slowly lose battery still, but you should have time to go away and do a mission and come back. So when you first spawn it, this will be on anyway, but um, so you won't need it. You won't need to turn it on. It, you'll uh, need it to be able to open the doors and things, but I just thought I'd point that out so that you know about it when you get where you're going for a mission. So going from the cockpit, you'll need to have the main power breaker on as well for anything to happen. Um, each of these 2x2 two two screens only lights up when the person is sitting in the seat. So that's the cockpit screen there. And then you get a co-pilot screen who can also, a co-pilot uh, map screen can also look through the camera. So going through the different things uh, from the co-pilot's position, first you've got the interior lights, uh, disable the fuel alarm when that goes off, console lights, landing lights which we won't turn on, navigation lights and ACSL we won't turn on. Uh, so console lights just gives you that backlighting so you can see things if you go dark uh, now there are also two cameras in the center here you can't see anything from the landing camera because we're too close to the ground but that's the rear camera into the uh, scene behind us so you can tell when people have been recovered and ready to go um, from the pilot's position uh, you've got floodlights as well which just illuminate the area around the aircraft you've got uh, infrared settings You've got a uh, indicator for your camera zoom because you have a, a zooming ability there. And then uh, auto level will do one of two things. If you're in helicopter mode, it will keep you at the selected altitude, which you select by putting in here. Um, and if you're in plane mode, it will keep you at a selected altitude and prevent you from rolling. So you will you know, fly level. Um, this button down here is for power mode. You should only really engage that when you're going long distances and you're already in auto level. Uh, it's not a good idea to try and fly around on power mode because it will easily uh, flip out and damage itself. So don't do that only when you're going long distances in a straight line. Um, we've also got fuel and battery and from the co-pilot you've also got um, engine RPM which actually displays RPS, I'll change that. And the pressure uh, of the fuel. You've also got another uh, fuel indicator just so you can keep an eye on it as well and this heading hold is a secondary system for your navigation that you would use in conjunction with the auto level so once you've got auto level engaged you'll pick a heading which should be ideally close to where you're already heading um, and then you enter that here select heading hold there and it will keep you tracked on that one direction over long distances it does tend to sort of slowly uh, move a few degrees to one direction so over you know if you go into the arctic that can be a big problem so this this will keep you going where you want to go uh, moving into the back you've got a roof mounted winch a hatch it's all pretty easy everything's um, uh, ma uh, labeled the only thing is if you do want to use those manual controls you'll need to unlock this manual override and then hit that button. That'll enable you to, like, to use them. Otherwise, the only thing you'll need to use is auto lower. When you hit that, it'll lower the winch down to the ground or to the uh, water. And then when you hit it again, it'll raise you back up. So with one button, you can just uh, deploy and recover the winch. You can't use um, the winch buttons themselves to recover the harness. You need to be have someone in here to operate the winch. Uh, apart from that, you've got the seating for up to 14 people so you could have two crew and 12 passengers or 14 passengers um, so I'll, I'll show you how to fly first of all this um, control here is for the tilting of the rotors so when you get it to say 65 is a good place somewhere in the 60s for um, taxiing you don't need to do this for taxiing I'm just demonstrating the tilting ability uh, you can just have it left in VTOL mode and uh, use WSAD to um, move forward back and uh, well you wouldn't use AD you would use left and right arrows to uh, yaw instead so looking through the controls they're all labeled on the left there uh, just going over what I basically said plus you've got a few other things on your one to six buttons including not having to go and look here and do this you can actually just use five and six to adjust as well 
So, having said all that, hopefully we still got, yeah, we'll have plenty of power. So you turn the compressors on, and then hit the ignition button. Once it actually fires, which will happen at 30 RPS over there, um, then you can turn the ignition off. You'll also want to probably turn the brakes off, and we should go through what this uh, indicator here is. This is your collective indicator, so white is the most collective, so it will shoot off into the sky. If I take it down to green, it goes through blue, which is still, um, gaining height. Green is staying where you are. Yellow is losing some height. And then red is, is really losing height quickly. Down to that second bottom one is a good place to taxi from with your wheel brakes off. I'm just going to set this up as well. This is my um, selected height that I'll be using. Well, I might actually make it. So, yeah, we're moving forward now. Coming out of the hangar. And I might just switch it to daytime. So you need slight trim adjustments in order to either stay still in VTOL mode or to be able to fly manually in plane mode without continually gaining or losing height. Those numbers are negative 13 for staying where you are and about 16, 16 to 20, something like that, for staying uh, level when you're flying. So I'll just put the brakes on here so we don't slowly move backwards. Uh, so I'll put those in the uh, description so people have a reference. But if I slowly up my um, collective and say bring it up to the green or the blue, that should then start to lift us off. So I can press 1 to get rid of the landing gear. Or alternatively, I can hit the uh, auto level button, and that will automatically take me to my selected altitude, which in this case is 30. So it'll bring me back down again. Now, while that's at 30, and my trim is at negative 13 to stop me creeping forward, you could use the winch. So you've got a um, handle here in case you need to um, move around the hatch while it's open and you're worried about falling down can just open the hatch and then hit the auto lower button and it should lower itself down. So we can see it lowers itself down to the surface. It is only a uh, medium winch so it's not super long, it's only got 20 meters or so but it'll be able to get to the surface from here. So, let's get that back out and I can show you how it flies. And also, I didn't take my own advice and turn the ignition off. Now the battery will start recovering. As you can see there. So, back to the pilot seat. Now, you can keep it at, uh, just engaged with the auto level and, and change your um, orientation of your rotors by pressing 5. Well, that might actually give us a little bit more height. And then continue to change. You may have some slight instability just as it kicks over into plane mode, but it'll sort itself out. You do have a little bit of the same sort of instability when you're going back from plane mode to helicopter mode, uh, which tends to make you gain a little bit of height, but it'll come back down again with no problems. Just make sure you don't have to do something like leave your power setting on and then switch to VTOL mode, because then you will really shoot up into the sky. So, like I said before, if we take that negative 13 and make it about a positive 16, and then I can switch off the auto level, and I should see here, this is my indicator for uh, raising or lowering, for gaining or, or the vertical speed indicator. So um, I'm not really gaining or losing any height, which means now I can start to just fly manually. Now, it has a really nice characteristic that if you just bank, it turns. You don't actually need to pull back on the stick. In fact, I don't advise it. If you do pull back on the stick, it can just, it'll flip you around in a very short time, and sometimes that can make you lose, it'll make you stall, basically, and then you have to suddenly, well, you'll be falling, you'll need to switch very quickly to VTOL mode. So unless you've got a lot of altitude, that's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I don't suggest doing anything but banking when you want to change direction, and it will just come to where you want to go. And then you 
is simply unbank or come back level. Now when you do want to fly level level and you're going around about where you want to go, then you simply hit the button and it'll make us lose that height that I gained as we turned. And then if I'm wanting to go back into uh, level f uh, hover, I'll negative 13 on the, on the trim, which won't affect me at the moment because the auto level's taking care of it, and then hit the uh, VTOL mode button. Hold that down until I've got them vertical. Now, as I said, it will tend to gain a little bit of height, but auto level is set on, so it will lose that height. It's already losing four or five meters a second now. So, you can see the landing cameras working there. So, we can see all ourselves around. Come forward. And at this point, it acts very much like a normal helicopter. So, from here, we'll just take a quick jaunt over to Draymore. It's only 9 kilometers away. So I'm just letting the uh, auto level keep me at this altitude. Now I'm holding 5 to go into plane mode. I'm looking at my heading, it's roughly 335. So once I've kicked over into plane mode properly, then I can put in a heading of 335 and then head, heading hold is on you can tell heading hold is on because your little yellow target indicator will come on and then it will slowly bring us from 336 over to 335 um, it does that last one degree of adjustment fairly slowly but there are, the others are reasonably quick and now that we're moving straight and level we're doing 135 knots uh, angle 335, bearing 335 at an altitude of 134 meters. So then we'll switch the button on and you can see our speed increases. And it'll do around 180 knots in the setting. Six kilometers away now. Low fuel alarm will go off when you get to a thousand litres. Uh, the vehicle comes with just over three thousand, which will give you forty minutes of flight time. If you go in cruise mode, you can easily make it to the Arctic. Uh, you can make it to the Arctic on power mode, but only just. So you need to be very, very good at landing or be okay with crashing it to be uh, able to do that. Uh, I suggest going on the economy mode if you're going to fly that far. On, turn it to night so you can see what it looks like. Alright, there's the target, so power off. Select a slightly lower altitude and hit the VTOL mode. Alright, now we're in VTOL mode. And I'll turn the heading hold off. It's not a good idea when you're in VTOL mode to leave heading hold on. You see how it's going left, right, left, right? That's what it'll do. Uh, it's it's more configured for level flight because it, it does hold its heading when you're in this mode you don't need a heading hold for it so now we're just going to move over this way and then I'll demonstrate how to land and that will be the end of this demonstration it's probably recommended to have four people I mean at, in an ideal situation so you'll have your pilot co-pilot to help you with the navigation and budding pushing and changing modes uh, and then also um, your two crew members to operate the winch you could in a pinch 
do it with two, but you will need someone to operate the winch to recover it. If you go down on the winch to recover someone, you can't get back up again. So that's uh, at a minimum of two people. Right, so we need to get down. Now what we do is we're going to select a um, yellow, like the, which is the first one below that green. You can make the two of them line uh, both light up, <coughs> which will mean you're on the cusp of the two areas. So that's probably not a bad bet is in that area uh, when we turn the auto level off. And then you'll see what happens with our vertical speed. So we are slowly, slowly descending at that setting. And as I say, I mean, it, you just want to keep an eye on that. Anything more than five meters a second you want to do something about. So it does look like it's perhaps picking up a bit of speed, but no, it, no, it seems fine. And you can see through your, your landing camera. Four meters a second now, so just a touch more up. And then that's touch down, and then reduce back down to your red, so you won't continue to fly off. Take wheel brakes off, and now we can taxi just by holding forward. So there you go guys, that is the NARPA edition of the Bell Valor V280. So unfortunately, another Creator Ample Pin released this exact aircraft only about three days ago. But this is not a copy, not a modification, it was completely independent, developed, just bad timing. So his one, his, uh, yeah, it looks very good, so you should probably check it out too. Alright, thanks guys.